So hi, everybody. My name is Lulu, and I'm standing here before you today in this outfit I bought a few days ago. And um, it took me a long time to find this outfit. And if you see me standing here, what kind of profession do you think I have? So here are some answers. <laughs> I work in technology, in deep learning, which is a special breed of artificial intelligence. I'm very sure that most people here in the room wouldn't have thought so. In AI, we call this bias. You project your idea, what you, your idea of what you have onto me, and it's producing an answer. So you create a neural pathway in your brain, and it's creating an assumption based on your historical knowledge. And usually it makes sense. So if I ask you a question, an answer pops up like fashion, or maybe she's a doctor. But I'm a bit of misfit, I know. I'm usually the only female in a company with dozens of AI programmers. And I'm a woman who likes to dress nicely. It makes me happy. So AI is a very broad term. Deep learning is what we call closest to real intelligence. It tries to mimic the biological brain. Deep learning works with artificial neural networks, and they learn the same way a child learns, from examples. The AI we work with works especially well with images. So if you show AI pictures of people wearing a white jacket and you tell it all these people work in fashion, and you show the AI examples of people not wearing a white jacket, and you say they don't work in fashion, AI will think people wearing a white jacket work in fashion. AI learns from the material you feed it with. So now you might be thinking, oh, this, this talk is about artificial intelligence, we hear so many stories, AI is going to take all our jobs, and take over the world, AI is mad, out of control, completely insane. AI is for crazy nerds hiding in a basement. You might want to leave now for a cup of coffee. But please don't. Stay here, because I know how you feel. Four years ago, I helped to set up one of the first AI companies of the UK. I've studied quite a few things, but not AI. So how did that happen? When I studied at Imperial College London, I felt a really strong pull towards, the technological, towards technology. And at one point, I thought, you know, I'm just going for it. I just threw myself in. And I was asked to join um, an AI startup as a business developer. And I was working with two programmers, and they told me, I had to be very humble because I didn't know anything about AI, and I should be really happy to be able to work with them. And I was. But I didn't really understand why did they ask me in the first place. So I studied environmental engineering, and I happened to know, to know a little bit about sewage inspection, pipeline inspection, satellite imagery analysis, smart cities. And they, those things turn out to be use cases for AI. So looking back, understanding how the world works is input for AI. AI is a tool, a set of tools. So saying, building AI algorithms is more important than its application, is saying building the kindergarten is more important than teaching the children. One doesn't go without the other. So two years ago, I fell from a horse, and I suffered a concussion. And all of a sudden, my brain stopped working the way it was supposed to be working. I wasn't able to socialize, walk in broad daylight, listen to sound, have a normal conversation, drive a bicycle, which is very important in the Netherlands. And 
it's quite frightening if your brain stops working. So my neurological pathways were damaged. And the doctor said, all you need to heal is rest. But it took me one and a half years with a lot of willpower and a lot of training to recover. And I trained my brains the way we train an artificial neural network. I slowly exposed myself to new situations to recreate the, the neurological pathways in my brain. And that is something that you, me, everybody is literally doing every day. By listening to this talk, by hanging out with your friends, you are creating neurological pathways in your brain. You are programming your brain. So if you think AI is way out of your league, just realize that what you are doing in here is way more complicated than what AI can do today. AI can outperform a human on a single task, but it has no conscience. It has no common sense. This is a farmer in Brazil. He cannot code, but he is training artificial intelligence. He is using a robot to pick up plants at the stem to put them in the soil. The farmer is training the AI to pick up the stem. The AI learns from images and extracts the features what makes the stem a stem. Does the farmer know exactly how AI works? No. But it's increasing his yield. So this is Bruno Latour. He is one of my favorite scholars. He said, everything we're building in the physical or digital world is an extension of society, a reflection of ourselves. There is an implicit decision hidden in it. And it's the same with technology. So right now, we think AI is being built in an ivory tower, something we cannot reach. And it's us, the people down in the field, we look up and we think, AI for technology is going to solve all our problems. And then the IT people in the tower, they might vaguely hear what we say and think, yeah, don't worry. We're, gonna, we're building something um, with the best intentions. And then they start to quarrel about whether to use algorithm A, B, or C. But hardly anyone understands what is being built, why it's being built, and how it's going to impact us. So the people down in the field, they don't, like us, we don't feel we can influence it. Maybe there are implicit decisions being made, but we don't know which ones. There actually is no ivory tower. It exists only in our minds. There are little islands in the sea. And on one island, there are the IT people. And on the other islands, let's generalize, are the other people. So one day, somebody from, let's say, the business island steps into a little boat, and he or she rows to the, rows to the um, IT island. And the moment he or she steps on the beach, they ask, um, he or she asks, um, so I have a question, what is artificial intelligence? And the IT people say, artificial intelligence? I don't know what you're talking about. That's such an inaccurate term. We call it augmented reality, or sorry, augmented intelligence these days. And usually people say, oh, I'm so sorry. They step back in their little boat, row back to their islands. And each island speaks their own little language. But four years ago, when I started at the AI company, I didn't row back. I stayed on that island. I tried to speak their language. I said, OK, augmented intelligence, what do you mean? What is it? What can we do with it? And today, I don't speak it fluently, but I speak it well enough to communicate between the business and the IT, the humans and the machines. AI can help 
autocratic regimes to power. AI can make deadly decisions. AI will steal jobs. But don't wait for it until it catches you by surprise. Because we can't blame AI. AI is just a set of tools. AI in itself is neutral. We humans use it. We humans teach it. Humans are ambiguous. We are good and bad, knowledgeable and ignorant. Our society works because we keep each other in check. And right now, we're building an algorithmic future. We're putting things in stone without the proper checks and balances. And I think it's really scary when lawyers, politicians, but also voters don't understand the world of technology and how it's influencing us. Our future is for everybody. We all have to play our part. That's why more people need to visit the IT island. Everybody needs to have a basic understanding of technology. So me, as a self-thought misfit in the world of technology, I feel I'm obliged to tell you the story. Because don't let not fitting into an IT profile scare you. Join the conversation, learn about it, apply it to your own life. And with my company Change Automation, I've started to spread this knowledge into the world. I've built a game that every individual in an organization without a technological background can play. And in 15 minutes, it will test your knowledge, your awareness and your value, values regarding technology and will give you instant feedback. So in 15 minutes, you know the basics. It won't grant you a PhD in computer science, it's simple, but most technologies can be explained in a very simple way, in one sentence. So for example, what is deep learning? We could say, computers can now see as well as humans can see. And I know that experts would probably say, look, this is not exactly covering everything, but it's the very essence, so people understand the dynamics at work. In the years to come, there will be a huge change. AI won't be the sole property of programmers anymore. We will be able to use it like we use our phones. We don't need to know exactly how it works to have a meaningful conversation. So with RoboVision, we have built a platform in which, on which everybody can build their own artificial intelligence. It works the same like my brain. Some kind of environment that can capture knowledge and make it accessible to others. We are, we've built it, other companies are building it. It will be accessible for everyone. Like this farmer. So small business owners can profit from it as well. And they can share their AI models in a model zoo. Will we benefit from AI? You and me. To achieve that, we require a different way of thinking about ourselves. We need to be able to learn continuously, be adaptive. And that is very uncomfortable. It all starts by asking questions. So in order to heal from a concussion, I had to reprogram my own brain. And that was very difficult and uncomfortable. But I did it. To survive in a changing world, we all need to continuously reprogram our own brains. So AI will shape our world.
But if more of us steer its course, AI will create jobs. AI will be for everybody. AI will be great, controlled by us, helping us solve our problems. So row to that island. Try to speak the language of technology and apply it to your own life. And I guarantee you that a future with AI can be really fun and really beautiful, but it's up to us, up to you. Thank you.